What's up, everybody? This is uh, Mauricio Cardinal. We're going to talk about how to get 150 roofing leads per month with Google local service ads. First thing I want you guys to do is I want you to really imagine the scenario. I really want you to imagine the scenario. What, what would your life look like? What would your business look like if you could consistently generate 50 to 100 to 150 leads every single month at a low cost every single month? What would your life look like? I really want you to imagine that scenario in your head because it's possible. And I'm definitely gonna show you in this presentation. So I want you to really understand how that's possible. How would things be different for your business, right? Would you hire more salespeople? Would you grow, would you open a different location? You know, how would you expand? Would you have more time for your family? I really want you to imagine that scenario because it's definitely possible. I'm gonna talk about this using LSA. Who is this for? Uh, this is for any roofing company owner, any business owner, any local provider, uh, this applies for you guys that really wants to grow their business, that wants to get high quality leads, that really wants to get their LSA to working. I know we have people from all over the country. Uh, some of them are have results, some of them don't have results with LSA. So I'm going to walk you through that and show you some of the things that we do. Uh, who am I? I'm going to give you a brief background about myself. Uh, my name is Mauricio Cardinal. I started uh, Roofing Marketing Pros in 2017. Uh, and during that time frame, we worked with, you know, over 200 contractors across the country. And uh, we've gotten a lot of great results. I, myself, I worked uh, I, I worked as a civil engineer. I have a construction background. I worked for a construction company for a few years. And then I got into sales. And then eventually started getting, got into digital marketing over probably 12 years ago at this point. And uh, when I started marketing, I, I did freelancing. I, I eventually quit my job, my sales job. I did freelancing for a few years uh, on the side. Uh, where I worked for different uh, industries. And then eventually I started Roofing Marketing Pros in 2017 when I decided to focus on the in the roofing industry, right? I saw a big opportunity in roofing because it's it's really far behind when it comes to other verticals in terms of digital marketing, right? So in that time frame, we've generated 150,000 leads, over 500 million in sales in, uh, uh, in that time frame. We've uh, over 135 star reviews on Google. We have over close to 40 video testimonials in that time frame, we work with some of the most well-known companies in this space. So when I and I speak about these things, uh, it comes from experience, right? It comes from really experience and some of the results we actually got for a client. So it does not coming from things that were, were, were theoretical. That's right? actual experience and practical, right? And what makes this different? This is just information, right? Good information you can use. There's nothing for sale in this uh, webinar. I'm just going to talk about some of the things we're doing, some of the things you can do for your own business to really get the best results possible for your own uh, roofing company to really scale uh, the lead generation, right? Uh, other, other thing too, at the end, I'm going to ask uh, if you guys want to learn more about how we can work together and you can talk to one of our national marketing consultants. I'm going to have a link to a, a calendar page where you can schedule a meeting and we talk about how we can apply this for your own business. So that's all it is at the end. So there's no really sales at the end, no gimmicky uh, information. So just good information at the end. If you want to speak more and learn more about what we can do, just uh, take the time and schedule a meeting. All right. So I want, let's get into it. I want to show you what's possible, right? And and that's a, the thing that I want to get going because it's very important to understand a lot of, a lot of people have uh, challenges a lot of roofing company owners have challenges scaling the LSA, right? So uh, ideally, like we have a, a, a problem like, hey, I want to spend more money, right? I just talked to a contractor yesterday. You know, the leads are great on LSA, but how do I actually get to spend more money? Well, it's definitely possible, right? So you see this right here, results. This is the last three months. Uh, in August, uh, this account spent uh, $154, right? $25,000 and spent $154 per lead and $25,000. Over uh, 231 calls, right, in that time frame, and 164 leads were charged, right? So that's showing you that's definitely possible. I'm going to show you other examples of other uh, people that we work with um, to show you some of the results that we've gotten um, and really about LSA. Uh, so definitely possible. Show you the actual uh, testimony about that. So this is when I'm speaking. is actually speaking from experience and some of the things that we're doing, okay? So introduction to Google Local Service Ads, also known as Google Guarantee. Right. So what, let's get to it. Right. Overview of Google local service ads and their importance for local businesses. So uh, Google local service ads have actually been around for a while. Uh, they've been around since uh, I, I started working with them really uh, 2019. Right. But they were they were released in test markets in 2015. Right. So they've been really using this platform for a long time. 
And in 2017, they finally expanded outside California because they just started in California. I think they started in Silicon Valley in the beginning. And then over time, they've added more, more cities. And they eventually rolled out in 2019. Uh, they rolled out nationally. Um, and I started using them uh, with, with our client in, in 2019. So we started using them right from the beginning. Um, and we've had a lot of success during that time frame. And uh, in 2020, the new services were added, right? So uh, that's kind of the, the timeline of LSA. They've actually been around for a long time um, in that time frame. And, and obviously, if you look at Google search ads, Google search ads have been around since 2000, 2001, you know, over 22 years. So they're a very proven way to actually get uh, local leads for a lot of businesses, right? So this is kind of the, the timelines of Google local service ads. Um, and they work with a lot of businesses in, in the roofing has uh, been one of the first industries they worked in. I think it's maybe uh, top 20, right, in the beginning. Uh, but they now expanded to 70 different verticals, right? And and my time frame, right, this is what's changed the last few years. This is what's something I want to really share with you guys uh, because Google Ads has changed tremendously the last two years, right? So in that time frame, what's changed is that we I really feel strongly that, and I'm, this might change in the future, but right now, the single best paid media channel for ads is Google local service ads. So in terms of ROI, return on investment, in terms of actual results, right? In terms of actual uh, results you're getting for yourself, for your business, the single best lead channel is paid media is Google local service ads. So in my opinion, right, for any, for a lot of businesses, right? And this is not only includes roofing, but a lot of different businesses, Google local service ads has largely replaced the effectiveness of Google search ads, right? Let me repeat that again. So Google local service ads have largely replaced Google search ads in terms of effectiveness, right? So that's why it's important you understand how you can apply to this business so you can maximize the amount you're spending to get the best possible result, right? Other thing to keep in mind, right? The quality is the highest and has the lowest risk, right? So Google search ads, right? Even Facebook, other media channels, you're just paying for the ad. You're paying for the click. On Facebook, you're paying for the impression. On Google local service ads, you're actually paying for the leads. So it works like a lead broker, right? You're only paying per lead, right? So it's actually a lot much better quality than a lead broker because you're not sharing the leads and you're not you know, uh, going back and forth with that. And it's a more fair system in terms of getting credit for the leads. And I'll talk a little bit about that in a second, right? The average cost per lead, this is a very common question that we get. So make sure you understand this, right? The lead quality is the highest we've seen. So in terms of our clients, we, we run over 120 campaigns uh, that we're currently running. Our clients, obviously, they're, every, not every lead is perfect, right? But overall, our client satisfaction for LSA in terms of getting actual results, they're the happiest overall, right? So they get the actual best results. They're more happy with LSA leads versus other platforms in terms of Facebook or Google search ads. Right. So just keep that in mind. The quality is the highest and it's always low, always, very, always low risk. Right. You're not going to be overspending most of the time. Right. It's very rare. We do have clients that are that are spending a ton of money, even the ones that I'm not going to show you today. One, especially in Florida with the storm hit, you can spend, you know, what, 10,000 in, in a week. But that's very rare. Right. So keep that in mind with what you're doing. This average cost per lead is between 40 and 80 dollars. Right. That's what we've seen across the markets. In other markets, for example, if you are a, want to scale and you have to outbid your competition, you might have to spend you know $120, $130, even $150, right? Other thing I want to point out, the average cost per lead has gone up tremendously the last few years, right? Last couple of years. Two years ago, average cost per lead is $30 to $50. Now it's between you know $50 and $100, right? Some markets is more expensive. So what does that what does that tell you? It tells you that more money is being spent on Google local service ads every year because it's getting more competitive, right? And uh, here's some of the verticals that Google local service ads work with. Um, home services is very big. It's probably the biggest home services and the law are the biggest uh, verticals that they work with. Um, uh, obviously, you see HVAC, window repair, window replacement, pool cleaning. Then you see a bunch of new verticals, including pet care, people care. Uh, you see the law, you see real estate finance. Uh, one thing, anecdote I want to share, uh, I have uh, friends that own agencies in, in law that work with a lot of personal injury uh, attorneys. Um, and personal injury space, if you guys are aware, they spend a ton of money advertising, right? Uh, they spend money on advertising because it's the only uh, law practice that allows you, it's not as strict in terms of advertising versus 
other other law, right? So uh, a, a case, a personal injury case can be worth, you know, 100,000 or even more. It could be worth millions, right? So personal injuries, they only really get paid on the settlement, right? And a personal injury attorney can be can pay a lot of money for a qualified lead. They can pay up to $1,000. So typically, they've been using Google search ads for a long time, right? And they were paying 1000 bucks per lead. Now they're using a lot of LSA, right? And they're getting about between two to four hundred dollars per lead. So it's a huge savings, right? Huge savings versus paying a thousand bucks per lead. Uh, obviously, roofing is you don't pay a thousand bucks per lead. It's very it's way too expensive because a uh, you know a roof is not a hundred thousand dollars typically speaking. But that's kind of gives you an idea of where the money is being spent. More money is being shifted from Google search ads to Google local service ads, and not only in just in roofing but in other verticals as well. Right. And insightful stuff. Okay, cool. Um, there's three ways to get leads on Google local service ads. There's phone calls, right? There's messaging and there's self-booked. And I'm going to talk about a second about how this works for you and really make sure you understand how to maximize the results for you. Right. So if you have Google always recommends that you have, if you want to maximize the amount of leads you're getting, you want to do phone calls, you want to do messaging, and you want to have self-booked. You want to have all three options available, right? What they recommend, and this is based on uh, their feedback, is that you want to give your customers, right, your homeowners, multiple ways to contact you, right? Because not everybody is going to have a phone call, especially in 2024. People, sometimes they just want to message people. They don't want to talk on the phone. Sometimes they just want to just have somebody like come out and take a, take a look at an estimate. And just go through that process, right? Uh, Google recommends you have all three turned on. One thing that I want to keep in mind, I'm going to talk a little bit to, later in the presentation, is that in our experience, right, you have to be careful if you have everything turned on, right? Because if you have everything turned on, you have to make sure that you're messaging, that you're getting back to your customers, to your leads right away. Because Google is going to grade you based on how responsive you are to the lead, right? So a lot of times we have, clients that have messaging and self book turned on, then they don't respond to the lead. And obviously that hurts your rankings. It hurts your, uh, the volume of leads you're getting. So a lot of times you just turn off the messaging and self book because they, they, they don't, they, you know, they just rely on phone calls. So obviously you want to maximize everything, right? In order to get the best possible result, you have all three turned on and you turn, then you respond to every lead as quickly as possible. Okay. Um, the cost. So I'm going to have a link to a uh, description of the video where it's going to have the cost of the calculator, but Google, and uh, there's going to be a link to, to help you determine the cost of the actual uh, lead in your area. So there's an actual calculator that Google uh, sh shows you that if you put in the zip code, you put in uh, how many leads you want to get, it's going to tell you how much you want to need to spend, right? Now, overall, what I've seen with that is not, a, not the most accurate way. You have to you really have to spend more than what they're saying, which just gives you an idea of what that looks like in your area zip code, right? All right, so everybody excited? Uh, getting started with Google local service ads, right? Here's a step-by-step -step guide for applying Google local service ads, right? First thing you got to do is the requirements, right? So it requires different things depending on the type of business, depending on the state you're in, right? So first thing is obviously a business license, right? If you're in a licensed state like Florida, it requires a business license. You have to have a up to uh up to uh, you have to have an up to date business license, right? Roofing license, right? Uh, you have to have a minimum amount of reviews. You have to have at least five Google reviews. Now this might change in the future because when we first started running ads, you did not need to have reviews, right? Now it requires five Google reviews. In the future, it might require fifteen Google reviews. So obviously, it might change. It's already a change before. Insurance certificate, right? You have to up-to-date CIO, certificate of insurance, right? You have to up-to-date, right? And obviously you have to do a background check. I'm going to talk more and get into that, how that works, right? With applying for, for approval process, right? Um, you have to have a business registration in some states, background check, license, insurance verification, and also have your profile completed and then also do a, a final review and approval. One thing I want to point out, a couple of things I want to point out and talk and, and, and get into detail about this, right? So overall, right, uh, you can be running ads. You can be, you can have your approved, you, you can have everything approved. You're going to have your, uh, uh, you're, you're getting leads. You have the Google Guarantee badge, right? You have, you did a background check. Everything is proven. You're already getting leads. It's live. The ads are live, right? And then six months go by and then your uh, certificate of insurance expires. 
or your business uh, license expires, right? That requires you have to submit a new license, right? An up-to-date license and up-to-date business registration. So sometimes a lot of, a lot of clients, they uh, have everything approved, but for whatever reason, the ad stopped showing, they stopped getting leads because they just didn't su up, submit up-to-date uh, paperwork. That's all that it is, right? It's something simple like this, right? Other thing I want to point out, right? Right. If a lot of we have had clients that generate a bunch of commercial leads from LSA, right? If you're doing commercial, right? If you're doing commercial leads, if you want to do commercial lead generation on LSA, it's definitely possible. We've had multiple clients get commercial deals from LSA. Uh, what it does, it requires a general contract of license, right? So it's a little bit different. So you have to have a, a general contract of license and you have to you have to actually on the services you you ask for you have to ask for the actual um uh, you know uh commercial process right you have to actual you're actually doing commercial work so you have to make sure you have that in place other thing I want to point out when you do a background check Google they do a they use a third party they use two companies they use Evidence and Pinkerton right Evidence and Pinkerton the way they work is that they send you a, a application process you have to submit your personal information. Personal information includes like things like your you know business license. It also includes your social security. So a lot of people hesitate about that, but it's a screening process, right? And then once you're approved, right, everything is good to go. You have the license, you have the fa final background uh, check, you have at least five Google reviews. Then you get the Google guarantee batch, right? And then your ads are live, and then you set your budget and you off to the, off to the races. Now. When the Google Guarantee Badge, I want to make sure you understand this, right? With Google Guarantee Badge, right, that means that Google has screened you, they approved you, and they are offering their customers, right, anybody who hires a contractor in the roofing space, right? I don't know how it is in other verticals, but roofing, it's, it's they offer $2,000 to the homeowner. So, for example, a homeowner, they hire a roofer, right? They're not happy with the actual result. They can go to Google, and file a claim and get two thousand dollars in return, right? Now, obviously, their their work as a third party. I did had a uh, you know a customer, uh, a client, a couple of weeks ago asked about this, and they were afraid that Google might sue them. Now, Google's a third party; they're a broker. Uh, they're acting as an intermediary between you and the customer. Uh, they're gonna any any customer dispute you're gonna have to solve with it, this customer themselves, right? Google's not gonna involve. The only thing they're doing is that they're offering two thousand dollars on the actual guarantee. So you can have the actual badge, right? That's what that means, right? And having the badge obviously gives you more credibility, establishes authority, and really makes you stand out versus your other, you know, your other uh, competitors, right? One thing that I also want to point out is that you can have the badge, but your badge can expire because you didn't have the process completed or your license expired. So your ads can sh still show up, but you don't have that badge anymore, right? And obviously you're gonna get leads, less leads because of that, right? So keep that in mind, right? Cost manager and budget. This is the calculator that I talked about. That's what it shows you. Um, basically, your budget estimations are used by, you know, any time, right? So this is what it gives you. Like if you put a zip code, 33178, I typed in 50 leads. I got, you know, you got to spend between two and $3,000. Now, I have seen that this is this is not as accurate as it looks like. You typically have to spend more and you have to, your cost per lead is going to be higher. So that's typically what I've seen, but it gives you a handy, you know, calculator to see your competition level obviously some areas are much more competitive versus others so just keep that in mind right so understanding cost per lead the main the main benefit one of the biggest things that's innovated about you know google local service ads is that they have a different uh, uh paying system right it's a pay it's a pay for performance paying system right it's paper lead right so they charge you for the lead and for the call right so it's a very low risk high reward right you can spend as much and you only spend whatever you get, right? That's the way it works, right? So this is an example, right? This person got 95 calls, right? 80 of them connected. So they they uh, connected with 80 calls and Google charged them 73 leads, right? 73 uh, uh, leads were charged, right? And the way Google charges, I want to make sure you guys understand. I'm going to explain this now. There is that Google, before, you had to do... Uh, manual disputes. So what that means is this, right? Every single day, right? Or every single week, you would have to go in there. And uh, if it's an invalid lead, you have to submit a manual uh, dispute, right? To dispute the lead, bad lead, right? Now, Google did away with that model. They do automatic disputes, right? So 
they they've used AI machine learning to actually go in there and figure out what is, uh, you know, what is a valid lead, right? And what is not an invalid lead, right? And they, they will charge you for the valid lead and they won't charge you for the valid lead. So it's kind of more, uh, it's less work, right? On your end, but less control, right? Now, one thing they have to keep in mind in order to get the best possible results, right? Sometimes Google will charge you for an invalid lead, right? And you have to be aware of the actual criteria that's, that Google has in terms of actual uh, having a valid lead, right? So I'll, I'll give you an example, right? If a client, if a customer homeowner calls and they have a question about a specific service, right? You have, right? Like a roof installation, but they have no intention of ever buying. Just have a specific question about your product, right? That is a valid lead in their eyes because you spoke to them. Um, they, they're not interested in the service, but you spoke to them and they asked questions, right? Not might might be the most fair, you know, assessment, but that's what they consider a valid lead, right? But if it's an invalid lead, is if it's a sales call, right, or if it's you know solicitation or something that's completely outside what you offer, right? Google does. Google allows you to submit feedback to the leads, right? Every good lead you submit good feedback. Every bad lead you submit bad feedback, and over time the algorithm will adjust and start giving you much better leads over time, right? So. Here's the strategies for budget allocation and bid management to maximize return on investment, right? So one thing that I want to point out uh, with this, this is like uh, depending who you are, like depending where you are, some clients have, uh, let's say, they have the reviews, they have a really strong profile. Um, they're getting leads, but they're not getting enough leads, right? So there's two things, right? Google recommends uh, automated bidding, right? And you maximize the leads. So the way it works with that is that Google's going to bid uh, on the maximum amount of leads, depending on their algorithm, right? Right. So they give you like, a, if everything's automated bidding, they're going to give you a fair volume of leads, right? Of equal number of leads with your competitors. Now, what you can do, right, is that you can actually uh, do manual bidding where you actually outbid your competition to start getting leads, right? So we had an example last week uh, for a client in Florida where they uh, were not getting the leads they wanted, right? And we adjusted the bidding to manual bid, and now they're getting, you know, 10 leads a day, right? And that's definitely possible, right? So that's the the change. You're actually outbidding your, comp your competitors, right? You're switching the bidding, and you're telling Google that I'm willing to pay more money to, for the for the lead, and Google will start rewarding you for the lead. Now, there's the other things I'm going to talk about how to actually maximize the impact, but that's one thing that you you have to do, right? Other things, right? So this is a budget allocation and bid management. So one thing with, with budget allocation, um, obviously like this is something that uh, like you, with with Google, let's say, the, the, the big, big strategy that we follow for our clients is called Google's Big Four. We focus on maximizing the results on Google local service ads, right? Getting the maps to rank, right? Making sure your Google business profile is very strong, getting reviews, uh, getting your citations, making sure it's, it's, it's working. Uh, and then finally, uh, the website, making sure your website is ranking on Google search. And then finally, Google's pay-per-click ads, right? And an order of importance. So pay-per-click ads is actually at the bottom, right? Google LSA is at the top, right? And SEO is second and third, right? Local SEO and that stuff, right? So when you're setting the budget on Google local service ads, right? Before you start spending money, right? This is what I recommend, right? Before you start spending, this is typically for most, most, uh, most contractors, right? Before you start spending money on Facebook, on Instagram, on Google search ads, right? You want to try to maximize the amount of spend you're spending on LSA. So if you can spend $10,000 and you can afford it and you're actually getting leads, all that, et cetera, spend the $10,000 on LSA. It's going to it's gonna give you the best and highest return on investment on that platform, right? Um, if you can, right? So you out, you actually outspend what you're trying to spend. So if you have a budget of 10,000, but you can only spend you know, 3,000 or 4,000, have a budget of ten thousand, you probably only spend three thousand, right? If you're trying to spend twenty thousand, might have a budget of fifty thousand per week. So whatever that is, you gotta have to spend, right? So that's the thing you have to do with bid management and also the a budget management. So keep that in mind, right? So Google Maps, LSA, and brand names. So Google Maps is integrated with uh, local service ads. Obviously, it's very important you have a very strong Google uh, My Business. A they work in conjunction with the results you're getting on LSA. So having a strong Google My Business with the right trust indicators is gonna be a big factor in getting the best possible result 
for local service ads. So obviously it's higher intent leads. You have simplified booking on, on Google on My Business. So those are the things that you can do to keep in mind, right? Now let's talk about optimizing your ad performance. You have any questions so far? Cool, no questions so far, but we're gonna talk more about the specific questions. So best practice for optimizing your uh, profile to stand down on local searches. Uh, the main thing about really getting the best results on uh, on LSA, the big thing is is your your profile, right? How strong it is. So one thing, this is straight from Google that it recommends, right? Having high quality project photos, high quality project photos, right? So what I mean by that is actually hiring a photographer, right? And getting high quality project photos of, of the work you're doing, right? That's what people want to see on LSA. Having high quality photos of your workplace, right? If you have an actual office, right? Uh, 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 pictures of your truck, where you have high quality images of that, that really works, really makes you stand out. Google has a very complicated algorithm. LSA has a very complicated algorithm. The more signals you give it, right? And having this stuff is very important, right? Having a strong logo, right? Having the right dimensions in the logo, right? The right pixels, smaller things like that are important. Having team photos that really make you stand out. All these things really have a big impact on getting the results on LSA. Obviously, some clients, you know, they're all over the place. So what we do is that we help them with this process by getting all this stuff situated with the right dimensions, the right photos. Now, sometimes we don't have that. We don't have the images, right? So it's up to you guys, right, to provide that, that information for us to actually get the best possible result, right? So again, if I own a roofing company and I've been in business for a little bit of time, I would invest in hiring a photographer, man. It does not take a lot to hire a photographer. It has a few hundred bucks. Um, Techniques for improving ad rankings and visibility with the Google local search ads. So let's talk about some of the techniques that we found. Um, again, it's different than Google search ads because it's not really about the ad copy. It's not about the offer you're making. It's not about the landing page experience. It's not about you know, what you're bidding on in terms of the actual CPC, cost per click. It's really about the things that I'm going to talk about now, which is reviews, right? Very important reviews, right? They enhance credibility, they build trust, they improve conversions. 90% of consumers trust online reviews, so they're very, very important. Uh, consistent review management is very critical for strengthening uh, a strong LSA performance over time. So obviously it's very important to get reviews. I recommend uh, using third-party software. We we use Contractor Link. There's other platforms like Podium, BirdEye. There's a ton of them out there that help you build more reviews that automates the entire process. So again, that's about getting more reviews, getting more testimonials. That's very important, right? Uh, reviews, right? They factor, a, they're a huge factor in, in your ranking algorithm, right? So, and there's two things I want to discuss. I'm going to talk a little bit in a second, right? Google, Google business profile is number one. So in terms of getting reviews, I would focus on making your Google business profile as strong as possible by getting amount of reviews, right? Not only they help you with your ranking, with your maps. So three of the top 10 search results, right? In terms of a ranking on the maps, right? It's reviews. So three of the top 10 are reviews. Now in terms of LSA, obviously reviews are a huge factor, right? They only build trust and credibility, right? It also provides the ability to have a screen program so uh, if you have the criteria, you set the criteria, you do the Google badge, everything is going good to go, go, and you're actually getting leads on that, that effort. So optimizing ad performance by getting more reviews. So how would, it's more important to get uh, more consistent reviews over time versus getting all the reviews over a single batch. So here's what I mean, right? Some people want to cheat the system and they use these, you know, fiber or whatever to get reviews. It's a uh, Google. What Google see is that they're very, they're cracking down really hard on fake reviews, right? Um, so you have to be very careful about this. Um, so what I would do is, is is try to get like reviews on a consistent basis. So if you're getting you know two or three reviews a day, and that's sixty a month, right? Versus getting sixty reviews in a single day, that's a big difference, right? So getting consistent reviews over time is a much better factor indicator versus getting you know all the reviews in a bunch of months, right? Um, getting more recent listing can, can, is different for each one. So one thing that I want to kind of clarify on this, this is something that's unclear yet, but what I'm what I'm reading, what I'm seeing on the tea leaves is that GMB is going to be number one. So basically what this means is that there's two uh, places you can leave reviews, right, for LSA. 
There's your GMB, which is Google Business Profile, which everybody knows. Obviously, you guys have your Google Business Profile. And obviously, LSA. So LSA, you actually have a link like a, where you can actually leave reviews, right? So there's two separate platforms. And, and LSA before, you used to have your own LSA listing. We can leave, we, customers can leave reviews on there, right? And build, people have built that up. What I'm hearing is that uh, Google is going to do away with this. They're just going to focus more on GMB. Now, I, I don't want to like, hey, put you in the right direction. That's what I'm reading, right? But overall, you just need reviews, right? And I would just focus on GMB. Yeah, so getting reviews on GMB on a continual basis. And here's a cycle that I want you to remember, right? So basically, the it's, it works in the algorithm, right? The more information you provide, the better results you'll get over time. So it's not an overnight success, right? So here's what I mean, right? So it, let's say you're just a starting business, right? You have a few reviews, you have like over 20 reviews, right? But you start getting some leads on LSA, right? You follow the procedures, you have a strong presence, right? You have a strong profile, right? You actually follow up with every lead. You actually call, uh, you pick up the phone every time a lead calls you, right? Somebody hires you on, on Google LSA, right? You mark the lead as sold, right? Because you, you can mark the lead as sold on, on there, right? And then that person, that same person leads a review, you follow the, the actual the entire customer journey from a lead to a, a actual an estimate to an actual sale, right? You give data to Google, right? You're giving data to Google that's the actual estimate and you're providing that information and you're giving that approach. So over time, what Google is gonna do, very powerful algorithm, right? It's gonna provide you more information over time to give you more of those customers over time, right? So again, this, this stuff does not work overnight. Typically what I see, Right. If you launch a new LSA account, it takes about two months to get going. Right. About two months to get going or to start getting the results. And then you start getting the leads. The more you're so responsive, the more you reviews you get over time, you start getting better and better and better results. That's how it works over time. Right. Um, navigating challenges. So these are the most common challenges that we face. And I'll talk more specifically how to kind of overcome some of the things. Right. So obviously, low lead volume. Sometimes you might have, you know, uh, you might have a, a low, if, you, if you're targeting too small of an area, you're not going to get leads. It's going to be very hard to get leads, right? So keep that in mind, right? Um, obviously, you might have to check bid adjustments, right? Sometimes you have to bid, outbid your competitions, right? Uh, refine cost per lead, right? So this is something that you're. It, it's kind of out of your control, honestly. Like the cost per lead is going to be whatever Google decides, depending on how competitive the area is and how often you're, you're advertising, right? Um, other thing that keep in mind, right? Very important, right? Google's, it's a very important factor. And we have an LSA rep that we spoke speak to, you know, once a week is this, right? You have to pick up the phone every time. So every time we don't pick up the phone, right? You don't give that data to Google. Google's going to penalize you by not Google, like picking up the phone, right? So we work with a lot of, uh, you know, contractors and sometimes they had trouble like actually answering the phone, very basic stuff, right? So like Google's going to, basically uh if you miss a lot of calls right google's going to penalize you right so you have to answer that with the phone the more the more phones you answer the more leads you're going to get right uh obviously you have your complete profile right and then at the same time you're actually making sure you're actually giving data back to google right i mean one thing that we've had uh, challenges with overall with our with our clients is that in order for us to get results right we need to have data with a client. So for example, if we're running a campaign, right, on Google, Facebook, whatever, we're doing getting leads, right? If you don't give us give us data back to make sure you're actually doing a good job or not job, right? You let us don't let us know, then we're gonna we're in the dark, right? And we're not optimizing for performance. Right. So same thing with Google. Google the Google does will take your money. They don't care. And they'll just stop showing the ads. Because at the end of the day, like they they want to provide the best possible experience for the people using Google. Right. So if they see that you're not actually picking up the phone, right? They'll send you leads and they stop sending you leads right away. So if you go back, right? Because I have had this conversation multiple times, right? You had LSA account that's been working for a long time and then you stopped getting leads. What happened, right? Maybe you stopped picking up the phone. That's a very common uh, situation. So that's what happens. So if you stop picking up the phone, that's something that can really be easily fixed and rectified. And once you start picking up the phone, then you start getting leads and start getting better results, right? Um, here's some some of those common issues that you know roofing companies uh, face in terms of like overcoming these challenges on LSA. Obviously, like having high competition. So one thing I want to point out is this, right? If you're in a Houston market, if you're in a Dallas market, if you're a Denver market, right, and you're starting out and you have like 10, 20, 30 reviews, man, 
it's it's hard to compete because you're you are you are uh, comparing yourself against these companies that have 500 600 a thousand reviews right now and i'm saying it's you shouldn't try of course you should try but you should temper your expectations right so i mean see one thing with this is that some clients we had like uh we're getting they had like 40 reviews in a year they got 100 they got 150 reviews and they got a huge jump in lsa right so it's obviously just not about like you know uh hey i can't get leads now it's about being patient and making sure you work the system to actually get the best possible results right those are the things you have to keep in mind right other common challenge is irrelevant leads so this is something that happens but google does a much better job overall versus you know if you're hiring a lead broker right with lead brokers you're you know you're sometimes you get a refund obviously but you're sharing those leads with other other people these leads are you know they're not shared right they're, you're going with, with whoever they go with it right um but Google allows you to get feedback, right? The more feedback you give, the better results you get over time, right? So sometimes it gives you bad leads, irrelevant leads. You give feedback that's not a good lead, right? You go on the Google platform and over time, Google should start sending you good, better leads, right? That's how it works, right? Um, another challenge that we see is managing negative reviews. Uh, this is very common, just not in LSA, but just in business in general. Um, obviously, you want to uh, limit the number of reviews you get, bad reviews, very common sense. Other thing is to do, if you have a negative review, respond in a manner that kind of addresses the issue um, and uh, and see how we can do better, right? That's a very, very common thing, right? Other thing is seasonal fluctuations and lead volume. This is very common. I mean, what, what I would do recommend a situation like this, obviously roofing is seasonal. Uh, I recommend having different, you know, uh, uh, you know, offers, right? And your website, on your leads, on, on your different things. That's something that you can do with, with, with getting better results, having some type of offer that can really drive home more conversions, right? Uh, things you can do. Other thing is is a delayed part of lead response is something that I've been talking about uh, throughout the presentation is that obviously if you uh, don't respond to a lead right away, then Google will penalize you and you'll get worse results. Obviously, like I recommend having a person dedicated uh, fully to this to respond to every lead as quickly as possible to get the best possible result, right? Um, here are some like tips for maintaining uh, performance and dealing with fluctuations and lead quality, right? Uh, lower bid adjustments on off season, right? Increase the budget during the on season. Um, offer different services, right? If you're doing um, roof maintenance, inspections and services, sometimes that like, clients want to just offer one service, offer different services to get some of those, the lead to start flowing, right? Offer seasonal promotions and discounts if you have that in place. Obviously, again, focus on getting more reviews. Stay active by optimizing your profile, getting more, more pictures, more relevant pictures, hiring high, high quality photos and videos, right? And then continually assessing the lead qualification, giving data back to Google to optimize the performance over time, right? So how do they get the top 10 three results? I mean, one of the most common things that our clients have is that, okay, I'm spending money, right? I want to be top three all the time, right? So I'm going to actually give you the data that Google has that you can see on your own. So Google, this is straight from Google's uh, ad rankings uh, 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 platform, right? Straight, straight from their frequently asked questions. So this is straight from Google. I'm going to read some of the things they pr provide, right? So here are the things that they look for in terms of actual ad rankings, right? So obviously verification status, right? Number one. So again, you might get verified. You might get everything approved, but sometimes uh, your paperwork gets uh, is out of date and you stop the verification. So you're actually not verified anymore. Your ads will still show up. You don't have the badge anymore and you stop getting leads, right? That's a big thing, right? Your bid, obviously, this is a big factor we've seen with clients. Um, Google recommends maximize leads. If you're if you're already getting leads, you're maximizing leads, but you wanna get more, it might be worth it to actually spend more money on doing manual bidding, right? So, I mean, if I mean, most clients, most people that I speak to in the roofing space, they, would, they, they wouldn't mind paying 150 bucks per lead if it's a good quality lead, right? So it might be worth it paying 150 bucks per lead because you're actually getting more volume in that time frame. So make sure you have that in place, right? Other thing, right? Responsiveness, right? So how, this is straight from Google, by the way. This is their factors and getting ad rankings, right? How respond to the lead, right? If you're responding to every lead as quickly as possible, right? Google's gonna show you, and I'm gonna show you in a second what that looks like, right? as people respond within minutes, within hours, or within days. That's the, the criteria they measure you for, right? 
sometimes a uh, person is not searching. Google does really good jobs giving you uh, people that are actually relevant to the people searching for. Obviously, and and when you're doing Google Ads, right? It's very it's based on keywords. In this case, it's also based on keywords, but Google does that work for you, right? So you don't have to do any of that stuff uh, uh, enable, right? Other thing is obviously enabling messaging and book leads. So again, Google always recommends you have this in place. If you're going to have this in place, you're de definitely going to get going to get more leads, right? So Google will definitely favor you versus other people, but you make sure you actually respond to every lead as quickly as possible, right? Uh, other things, right? Having a very high quality profile. These are the things that Google looks for. This is straight from Google, by the way. So make sure you guys have this in place. Your rating on Google, right? Obviously, having a 4.2 is not as good as having a 4.9, right? Very different rating. Um, your average response time, right? How quickly you respond to the lead? Google will measure you in the minutes, right? By, by the second, they'll measure you, right? So they, they know exactly how fast you respond to every lead. Your business information is up to date, right? You're providing Google with actual uh, uh, lead quality in terms of actually like a ranking ecosystem, right? So you're giving data back to Google. The, this is a good lead, bad lead. It's not, not a good lead. It's a good lead, then you uh, it's a sales lead, right? You actually sold the job. You get a review. That's how it works over time, right? Ad rank opti optimization. This is how you rank the ads by, by doing more of these things that you're doing, right? And then high quality images, right? Again, Having a profile with high quality images is very is very different versus one that doesn't have. It's a big difference, right? And obviously, a number of reviews are a huge component. I talked about multiple times over reviews. Keep repeating myself, but it's very important you get a lot of reviews, right? So this is what I mean by responding to every lead as quickly as possible. So Google, um, you know, measures you depending on how fast you respond to every lead, right? So in this case, right, which person would you reach out first if you put yourself in the homeowner shoes right and obviously this is hvac but put yourself in the homeowner shoes right if you have a broken ac right and you want somebody coming and you live in arizona right a very hot place um or you live in miami a very hot place with a lot of humidity right which person would you respond to would you call right away obviously the guy who you respond to in a minute versus oh i'll spend a few hours no i want somebody to call in today right to fix my problem that's what i want i need ac Right. This is not like, hey, I'm not going to be waiting. Right. I want instant gratification. Right. A lot of roofers want instant gratification, but they're not giving their homeowners instant gratification themselves. So that's what you do. You have to respond to every lead as quickly as possible because it's going to be very, very important. Right. Um, here are some uh, case studies. Right. Um, so this is Aricon in, uh, in Maryland. They uh, overall 10,000 spend uh, in, in uh, July, uh, $145 per lead, $25,000 spent in August. Right. So they got 164 leads. And then in September, uh, 73, 73 leads charge $153 per lead. Um, seller roofing, right? They spent uh, close to $6,000 in August, $80 per lead. 70 leads were charged. 60 leads were charged in September. In August, obviously, only uh, uh, they only got in 23 leads charge and $80 spent. So we're obviously not still in, uh, still in October, right? Um, Rooftastic. Uh, these guys spent uh five fifty seven hundred in August, right? Forty five leads, um, forty five leads again in September, right? In October, uh, eighteen hundred leads, one hundred sixty sixteen dollars per lead, right? So obviously, this is important to understand. Um, you want to scale in the in this space, right? You wanna you wanna get more leads. This is definitely possible for you guys. So make sure you guys understand this. Follow all the things that I talked about. You can get you get similar results, right? Key takeaways that I want to go over. Um, obviously, you don't have to run ads, right? It's just setting up the profile, having optimized performance, getting more reviews, respond to every lead. That's what it means to, right? Uh, having a paper lead model, right? So they only charge per lead, right? So it's not like a, a it's not, not like a, um, uh, a ads, right? I've seen so many horror stories where people are spending ten thousand on Google ads and they don't get a single lead, right? That will never happen on on Google local service ads, right? Obviously, bo boosted visibility, right? Google's favoring this for a reason, right? So when you search for a roofing company near me, what is the, the first thing that people see? Google guarantee ads, right? They don't see the SEO. They don't see, um, you know, Google search ads, right? They see the local service ads at the top, right? Google guarantee badge, right? So in Google guarantee badge increases the trust and credibility. Having profile reviews, reviews are very important for improving your LSA. Um, they encourage customers to leave positive reviews, responding to the feedback in a way. Obviously, it gives you flexibility. 
Um, you don't have to be spending a lot in the in, in the winter time. You can spend come back or spend more in the winter, try to spend more, right? And then simplify lead management. Obviously, it makes it very easy to track the performance and the leads and everything that's coming in into this, right? Um, questions and answers. Like I I went kind of over any of the questions I have. If you guys have any questions here, um, let me know. I'm looking at here. Any questions? Um, yeah, so basically some of the most common questions I see like about this. Um, I mean, I, I think I hope it answered the questions really. If you, a lot of questions, a lot of people have LSC already. They're get they were getting leads, but they saw a drop back. The big thing for you is basically getting more reviews, right? Increasing the bid. So sometimes what I see is obviously increased competition in that market, right? So that's what I see. So sometimes they were getting leads, and then one year later, they're getting a lot less leads because it's probably increased competition. So make sure you out you do manual bidding, right? Um, obviously, like reviews are very important. I've talked about that many, many times. Um, I have a question. What do you do to get in the top three position in Google, Google Maps or organic? So that's more of an SEO uh, question, right? But obviously with Google Maps, right? It's really about um, uh, optimizing your Google business profile. So what I talked about earlier, right? Your Google Plus business profile is very, very important in your business, right? Because if you optimize your Google business profile, right? You get reviews, right? You're going to get more uh, more uh, leads into your Google Maps. So in terms of rankings, there are basically 10 factors getting ranked on Google Maps, right? Three of the top 10 factors are are, are your reviews, right? The velocity of reviews, the amount of reviews, and also the rating, right? Those are the three, top three factors. Now, another big factor is proximity, right? How close you are to the person. So if you have an office in Miami versus somebody in Broward, obviously somebody in Broward, even though they might have a lot less reviews than you have, the person in Broward is going to get favored versus somebody in Miami, right? Other thing too is your roofing category, your category, what category you are. Are you a contractor, roofing contractor? A lot of people don't have the right category and having an optimized presence. So when you have a Google My Business that's optimized, right, for performance, not only is it going to affect your rankings on the maps, on the SEO side, right? It's also going to affect your rankings on local service ads, right? So it's, it's one in one. Other thing I want to point out, make sure you guys understand this, very important, is this, right? Google, obviously you guys are aware, when you search for Google, it's, get, it's giving a lot of AI answers, right? It's getting it's using generative AI to generate answers, right? So when somebody searches for best roofing company near me, I want you guys to try it. It's gonna Google, what it's doing is pulling information from Google My Business to give that answer to the consumer person searching. So they're already using AI. They're pulling the information from Google business profile to give that answer straight to the actual uh, person using it, right? So that's basically what it means. So make sure you guys understand this. Um, is there a, is there a minimum star rating where your impressions fall after a cliff after? I I for that I mean five star rating right in the beginning, right? That's what it, that's a minimum rating, but you don't have to have a minimum. There's no minimum, right? It really depends on the competition you're facing, right? So for example. Right. If you are in Dallas, Texas, right, you guys are competing against companies that have 400, 500, 600, 700 reviews. And not only one or two, there's dozens of them that have those reviews. Right. That's tough. Right. But it does not mean you should not try because there are so many Google's I mean, DFW is such a huge market that you have to, uh, 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 you know, do that. Right. And in terms of falling off a cliff, your rating is not going to fall off the cliff after it's basically about like continually getting more reviews over time. And those reviews are going to be there forever. They're not going to like go away, right? Um, does having a blog still make sense? No, having a blog is very important. So in terms of content, right? So like the way we work with any, with websites, right? If you're going to have more visibility onto your website, you want to have more keywords, right? So the way we add more pages to your website is by adding not only pages to your website, but adding blogs. So blogs is a primary way to drive more traffic and visibility into the search results. So it's the, definitely something we do. In our end, right, depending on the on the on the package you have, right, we offer anywhere from twenty blogs per month to sixty blogs per month, depending on the SEO package you have, right. How do I set up online booking on LSA? That's something that gives you an option, right? Um, I I can connect with you and and show you that's really just a, a simple thing. Basically, the way it works is that Google allow, LSA allows you an option to set up online booking, right? Which you can uh, go in there 
and uh, and an answer, you can either turn it off or turn it on. So basically how you receive the leads, you can see how that works. But I, I can go in there kind of show you guys if you, you guys want to know more about that. Um, if you guys want to know, please like, like want to learn more about this, how we can set this up for you guys, how we can optimize your LSA, right? Just book a meeting here. That's a calendar. I see you guys are on um, roofingmarketingpros.com slash calendar. I just book a meeting on there, right? And uh, we'll talk right more. Um, see if that there's any other questions. But yeah, I'd love to talk to you guys. And uh, let me know like what what questions you guys have. And um, and yeah, like I'm excited to talk to you guys. Just just book a meeting here. Hope you guys like this presentation. But if, if there's any other questions, I saw, saw a few questions come in. Um, but if there's any other questions, that, that's, that's about it, guys. So I really appreciate your time. Thank you, guys. Just book a meeting here. I'll see you guys soon and we'll talk soon, okay? Thank you.